Hello listeners and welcome to the Montel Weekly Podcast, bringing you energy matters in an informal setting. This week's episode focuses on Poland, along with Bulgaria, the first countries to be cut off from Russian gas. How has the country reacted and how will it be able to source alternative supplies? Will Norway come to the rescue or will renewables fill the gap? Perhaps Poland will need to rely on coal for a while longer. Joining me, Richard Sverson, is Joanna Maczkowiak Pandera, president of Poland's Energy Forum, a think tank. A warm welcome to you, Joanna. Hello, Richard, and hello, everybody. It's nice to be with you. Welcome back. Absolutely, Joanna. And, um, you know, it, it, it's quite dramatic what has happened in, in Poland, um, you know, over what happened at the end of last month. So I'd like to focus, first of all, on the energy crisis and what's currently happening. So was the cut in Russian gas, what, did it come as a surprise to people in Poland? It's indeed a very good question, and I think that everything that has happened recently has not been a surprise in Poland. So on the contrary, Poland has been afraid of it for a long time. Uh, So it was our uh, long-standing imaginarium, uh, we call it, a deep fear that Russia would use its energy advantage uh, advantage over Europe, over Poland, and uh, this exactly happened. Uh, So this is something what we observed since July last year. Uh, this energy war uh, which uh, Russia is is leading. And uh, I mean, in the last months or years, Poland political efforts around Nord Stream 2 uh, were exactly an attempt uh, to prevent this uh, growing independence. Uh, but of course, you can never be well enough prepared for war and uh, and the scale of brutality was a surprise uh, to many, so also in Poland. So, in fact, Poland is uh, doing its uh, diversification project uh, uh, in terms of gas since already 15 years. So, at the end of the year, 2022, we should be already ready to cut off uh, Russian gas. Uh, uh, So, finally, it was something what Poland was uh, for a long time prepared uh, already. However, it's still a stress uh, for Polish consumers and as everywhere in the world, Uh, or maybe not in the world, but in Europe, uh, the issue of uh, rising fuel prices uh, is a challenge. Uh, So uh, this is, I think, where we are. So it's not as dramatic as you say. I don't see a lot of anxiety among decision makers and uh, and consumers. Uh, I mean, anxiety exists uh, in terms of what happens uh, next in the economic terms, but it's not that... uh, we afraid that from one uh, uh, day to another there will be completely no gas. Also, uh, gas storage is uh, full now, uh, so it's like 90% uh, full, uh, uh, which means, but of course, uh, it means that we could survive for a few months only, maybe two. Uh, in summer, in winter, it's uh, it's probably worse, like uh, for, for one month. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, the situation is not as dramatic as you say but but of course it's may um, and uh, as everywhere in europe we see decision makers who focus too less in my view on demand reduction and on uh, on preparations of, of the society for the coming winter because uh, winter certainly it will be a challenge uh, for poland and for many member states was there an element maybe Jana, of you know poland telling you know Brussels or it's it's maybe it's Western neighbors like we told you so they, we told you this could happen. Uh, of course, I mean politically, uh, you can always see uh, a kind of uh, satisfaction that we told you so. It was uh, already our uh, story many years ago, and nobody has listened. Uh, uh, we also took part uh, as forum in the discussion around North Stream two and. Uh, Indeed, uh, I think that we, we as, uh, let's say, Europe, underestimate uh, this threat and this reliance on Rus- Russian fuel. Of course, it's not only that the decision makers are um, to be blamed. Uh, it was also because it was uh, for, for consumers, uh, we had an access to relatively cheap resources, uh, renewables, uh, few years ago uh, were uh, much more expensive. So there was always this this challenge what to choose and we choose just the cheapest option. And now we see uh, 
how difficult it may be once you have uh, such uh, market squeeze and uh, and an aggressor on at the uh, other end who uses the situation who uses this reliance um so this this is a challenge and uh, we did an analysis uh, two months or three months ago about uh, how much we paid for the russian fuels and uh, it is uh, about billions lot uh, which we paid in the last 20 years so it's quite long period of time and in, in the discussion uh, on how much the energy transition will cost we also end up with the similar amount of uh, investment which are needed uh, at the level of 1 billion zlot so uh, but but of course those investments like energy efficiency renewables they are giving us more independence and more local energy uh, and um, and diversification distributed energy so in fact it's uh, uh, the discussion which we are having now in Poland what does it mean uh, everything what we are experiencing and what does it mean for energy transition for for um, uh, also energy independence in the context that nobody in future can really uh, use its uh, monopolistic uh, position. Mm. And has has the sort of country united in 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 the aftermath of this cut in supplies from Russia? They've stood together. Would you say? Uh, in Europe, you mean? Uh, or in Poland, and it's standing. Do you feel there's a sense of unity against this aggressive? way of weaponizing gas supply? I think it's really a good point which you made that Poland is generally a very polarized country. So we have uh, government versus opposition. So we, we really are polarized. Like, uh, I don't know uh, about other countries, maybe US is similarly polarized. So we are also polarized. But in the context of Russia, we see really huge uh, sense of uh, unity like of uh, of common goal and i'm also pleased to see that uh, this mood is not only in poland but uh, even in the eu so i'm really uh, happy that poland in this uh, context uh, in this uh, um, context of of russian war uh, really stands on the right side uh, and is actually leading uh, to some extent in europe on um, on how we can uh, uh, tackle this crisis. So, uh, but of course, uh, you know, the situation in each member state is completely different. There are countries who can really not uh, resign of gas from one day to another uh, or uh, call from one day to another because uh, this uh, kind of diversification requires uh, certainly preparation, uh, new contracts, new directions. But um, my feeling is that at this stage, uh, I also have been to Brussels uh, this week when I had conversations with different um, representatives of different chambers of commerce and also representative of the commission. So we see that the dialogue uh, on the European level is tough, uh, but still... Uh, quite um, we we have the same same goal this is my feeling that i never i didn't hear any other voices that we should really stick to russian supplies uh, uh, it, it would be very unpopular at this stage mm. to say that I, I i have the feeling absolutely there's a sense of unity and and i i think i i can sense there's well that, that poland has assumed quite a prominent role especially after the gas was cut at the end of the last month but you know, we're in the middle of an energy crisis. Um, you have, you know, very high prices, both at wholesale and retail level. Uh, many countries in Europe have introduced a price cap, both at wholesale and retail levels. What, what, how has the government in Poland reacted? Uh, this is also a good, a good question. So, first of all, uh, pr probably Polish. Uh, power and uh, heating market is not the most uh, uh, li uh, liberalized market in Europe. So, uh, in fact, uh, so we were in the discussion about uh, deregulating tariffs uh, in terms of gas and electricity. So now those discussions, of course, have been stopped. So everybody knows we should actually, uh, for, for electricity uh, from the next year on and for gas, uh, we should uh, basically uh, cancel the tariffs, but it won't certainly happen. So this is the number one that uh, we are moving uh, more uh, 
back in, in, uh, in the direction of uh, strict regulations uh, for consumers, um, stricter uh, price regulations. And then uh, government at the beginning of year of the year introduced also uh, anti-inflation shield, uh, which um, consists of several measures uh, like uh, VAT reduction or uh, uh, basically access uh, tax uh, cancellation. So uh, it should be uh, operating until end of July. So uh, we don't know whether it will continue uh, or uh, it will stop uh, at the end of July. I don't think uh, it may stop at this stage because, as you may know, Poland has a very high inflation rate. Uh, now it's around 12%. So it's extremely um, political topic. On top of this, uh, the GDP is also growing. So it's not that we uh, now see a huge demand for uh, uh, in uh, industrial sectors or on the consumer side. So uh, GDP is uh, growth is now at the level of 8.5%. Uh, uh, so um, we may say that our economy is, is really heated up. Uh, so once uh, uh, the summer is over and uh, we may expect uh, some uh, difficult developments on, on the supply uh, side uh, uh, regarding gas, uh, coal and, uh, and oil, uh, it may be really uh, like, uh, you know, big shock for the economy, I expect, in Alpon. Mm. And how about Polish industry? How has it reacted in the in the current energy crisis? Have you seen any signs of demand demand destruction or, or lower demand from industry? No, this is something what we don't see. Electricity pro uh, production consumption is still growing. It's like uh, it's it's quite huge. Also compared, I mean, uh, last years were of course not typical because of COVID. So 2020 there was demand destruction. That for sure. Then it recovered in 2021. But what we see in 20, 2022, that the uh, electricity consumption is still going up. So from one month to another, it's like 4%, like in April. So it's still, uh, we do not see the signs uh, that uh, the economy is really uh, now suffering uh, a lot. Uh, of course, uh, what we can see uh, also on the electricity production side is. Uh, um, very high margins, uh, CDS, clean uh, dark spread. Uh, and um, I, I think that this is, you know, also the this panic. We are in the panic mood where everybody really afraid uh, and uses also the situation in order to make profits. Uh, but of course, electricity generation in Poland is also in very difficult position because uh, on one hand, Poland has one of the lowest uh, uh, wholesale electricity prices in Europe still. Um, or in the region uh, because of uh, low share of gas uh, and, and the uh, low electricity prices were related with um, country-specific contracts for coal. So, you know, we have a lot of... Uh, basically, we use uh, in the power sector generation, in, in electricity generation, we use uh, own coal mainly. So uh, there is almost no Russian coal uh, in electricity generation. And the um, producers, electricity producers, they, they had long-term contracts with uh, mines. And now uh, they, they are, were really disattached from uh, global ARA, ARA coal price. And now this is changing. So mines are basically, um, they, they try to cancel the contracts uh, and there is, you know, in the context uh, of this panic, pro electricity producers, they don't know at which price they will uh, buy coal uh, in future. So uh, they thought that they have long-term contracts, but now it's not the case. So what we can see is uh, is really high uh, prices in the long-term contracts for electricity. It's above 250 euro per megawatt hour for the next year. And this is quite unique. So basically... Shorter market in Europe uh, are quite expensive, but still long term it, it does look uh, it does not uh, look like this. But what is what has been shock for Polish uh, consumers recently are these long term contracts, which seems to be uh, going up because of this entire coal crisis and this um, redefinition of uh, contract with Polish mines. Mm. 
but then the, the electricity generators, it would be fair to say, are earning quite a good margin if the, the prices in the wholesale market are, are that high as well. Yeah, they, they are making uh, huge margins at, the, at this moment. Uh, even regulatory um, office last week said that uh, they will make an investigation around this uh, according to the remit rules. Uh, however, um, uh, regulatory office also complains that they do not have uh, sufficient tools in order to really uh, um, check it into details. And this is something what I think we need to pay attention in the entire Europe, that in such a fast-changing dynamic market, we really need to have tools uh, f- for um, good market monitoring. And I'm afraid that, that uh, you know, we are not well prepared uh, for such um, intransparency, which we can see now in the market, uh, and not clear reasons on uh, what is exactly happening and to which extent uh, prices increases are, are justified and to which extent it's just uh, market uh, play. Mm. I mean, it's, do you think in, in certain countries in Europe, there's been increasing calls for, for windfall taxes on, on profits generated by, you know, mainly oil and gas companies, but also uh, electricity producers, uh, certainly the ones that are benefiting from the increased prices due to higher higher gas levels. But um, is that the case in Poland, uh, Joanna? Yes, I mean, generators are also making a lot of money. And uh, of course, there is, uh, as as we mainly speak about uh, state-owned utilities, so decision makers are not, uh, you know, very much complaining about this. Uh, of course, in the past, utilities were in very difficult uh, situation uh, in, in terms of their financial conditions. So, there is still ongoing discussion in Poland about divestment of the coal assets because they, uh, but of course the, we see that the discussion slow down because currently with electricity generation for the first time since um, years, uh, you can actually make profit. Uh, but of course uh, we, we can see that um, the discussion goes in the uh, taxation of, of those profits, uh, additional taxation, and probably it will also uh, happen in Poland. Uh, we don't know when exactly, but uh, I think uh, it is something to be expected. Mm. Interesting. I'm, I, you know, I just want to turn to, you know, the cut in Russian gas and the implications of that. Where, so what can replace us in Poland? You say by it can replace it by the end of the year. Um, from where would that gas come? Joanna? So first of all, Poland uh, has already LNG terminal and it has still some capacities uh, to increase LNG imports. So uh, in that context, already some, uh, I mean, f- like eight years ago, we had uh, around uh, 80% of gas from Russia, 90%. The rest was uh, own uh, production, um, which is at the level of four or five billion cubic meters. But at that time, we consumed like 70 billion, uh, 17 billion uh, or 16 billion uh, cubic meters. Uh, it is uh, changing now in Poland. Po- in the recent years, Poland increased uh, actually dramatically, very dynamically um, consumption of gas. So last year, we con- uh, consumed uh, 21 uh, cubic meters. So it's like for 5 billion uh, cubic meter more uh, compared to a uh, few years ago. Uh, and of course, the entire energy transition is, is really compli- is getting complicated because uh, certainly many utilities thought that they will transition from coal to gas, that gas will be transition fuel. At this stage, you can see uh, still many utilities and district heating plants and generators, they insist uh, um, that they will uh, uh, build some uh, either CHP or uh, or or uh, um, some generation units in electricity, but nevertheless, uh, uh, we may see if the concrete uh, concrete investment decision may may be taken in such disrupted uh, market. Uh, so, uh, but uh, but uh, coming back to your question on where the gas uh, can come from. Poland invested in the Baltic pipe, from Nor- uh, which is Norwegian gas, uh, basically, and it should be in operation. It should be ready by uh, October, uh, November, we hear. 
probably uh, from January, Poland will be able, uh, I mean, the entire um, capacity of this uh, pipe is exactly 10.5 billion cubic meters, which is exactly the volume of gas which we are now obtaining from Russia. So theoretically, uh, we may uh, replace uh, Russian gas with Norwegian gas from from January uh, next year. Uh, But, uh, of course, there is an issue of the contracts uh, with um, Norway uh, and whether uh, there will be enough gas and what will happen with prices. So there is already some volume with Norway which is contracted. It is uh, like two, four uh, uh, billion cubic meters a year. I hear different numbers, so I'm not entirely sure it's... uh, also not um, not public uh, so uh, but then the rest uh, everything depends on the in my view on the uh, coordination of the european commission of this topic so uh, one of the repower eu program is also common purchases of gas and it is extremely important that uh, eu countries will not compete with each other that uh, that there will be some mechanism uh, to to coordinate who is buying how much gas, uh, because of course, uh, um, what what is also interesting that uh, since uh, war started, that the volume of the contracts with Russia is basically going up. So in fact, uh, we want to um, get rid of Russian fuels, but uh, we are paying at this stage more and more uh, for uh, for. Um, goods traded from Russia, including uh, oil and gas. Uh, so uh, this is also a challenge. Absolutely. So there, there's, I was going to say, there's going to be quite intense competition for this Norwegian gas. And in, in the end, it'll probably come down to, to prices and to the contracts signed. But yeah, maybe it, that can all be coordinated at a central European level, although there are probably several member states that, that oppose that as well. Um, but what, if, if you, you you mentioned repower EU, what, what does your, you know, the, the, the policy or the the proposals, the package that came out of Brussels in, in late May. What's what's your reaction to that, uh, Joanna? Is that a positive side? Can Poland access more funds here to to really push to 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 the energy transition? First uh, reaction is certainly positive because uh, the Commission has prepared this paper quite quickly. Uh, and this is like first reaction. It's a plan. It's not actually. Uh, um it's it's hard to define what actually repower eu is exactly because it's not set of regulatory measures which uh, would take then years in order to implement it uh, it's not also uh, new funds which would be available uh, so it's a kind of mobilization and direction for eu member state in which we are uh, uh, in the context of this difficult situation in which we are, uh, what we should do. And in that context, I think it's really good. So, uh, But of course, uh, what I can see, uh, and, and generally energy efficiency, renewables, uh, common purchases of gas, uh, more coordination on the EU level, it's uh, all good. So uh, certainly there is nobody who would say that the, we have, uh, we don't have as Europe, by the way, really uh, no uh, other... Um, what what we can do? I mean, uh, should we really be more reliant from uh, on gas or oil supply from other countries? Uh, are these countries uh, much better than Russia? Maybe uh, maybe they are, but in future uh, we we shouldn't be dependent uh, too much uh, on any other country. So this is also part of this entire um, decarbonization pro- project uh, that we should be. Uh, uh, be depend, uh, we should build uh, renewable uh, local sources. But, but generally, Poland, still uh, what is uh, important in the terms of uh, funds, uh, that uh, unfortunately, that we still discuss with uh, European Commission uh, um, uh, recovery funds. Uh, so we are one of the least countries uh, who didn't get uh, prepayment. Uh, and actually, it's still not clear whether uh, we will get uh, the funds or not. So uh, in the back, you have the issue of rule of law. Uh, and uh, and on one hand, government last week said that uh, the agreement was reached and uh, uh, Poland will get recovery funds. Uh, uh, 
Uh, and um, but on the other hand, it seems uh, still not to be resolved. The European Commission said there uh, needs to be specific milestones, legal milestones, which which needs to be made in terms of uh, rule of law. And it seems that this is still part of a political discussion within the government. So, um, but of course, uh, also. Um, uh, the entire multi-annual financial framework and the uh, partnership agreement, which is a part of setting EU budget. I mean, EU budget is not recovery fund. Uh, a recovery fund is something additional, but uh, normally Poland should uh, have from uh, next year on also uh, EU funds, like uh, for, for other purposes. It's like just transition, uh, regional funds, uh, um, Phoenix program, uh, and I hope that uh, this will also uh, be accepted. Uh, I mean, there will be agreement reached between European Commission, and those funds will be available. Uh, certainly, in the situation in which we are, uh, further electrification, renewables development, grids development, also heating, uh, district heating um, is under huge pressure. Uh, and uh, investments are needed because uh, the only thing which we can do is, uh, in fact, uh, accelerate a transition from coal and gas. Uh, coal is now, of course, there is now, it's maybe a different topic, but uh, coal uh, uh, environment, you can say, in Poland is now trying to, to say that we need to come back to coal. But in fact, the coal prices are so high at this stage and also uh, uh, the decision of Polish government that will not buy coal from Russia uh, anymore, uh, the result of the decision is that district heating plants, but above all uh, households, will face really huge challenge uh, with uh, heating uh, their homes uh, in, in winter. Because majority, uh, the, the, the Poland imported around 15% of coal, um, majority came from Russia, and uh, actually 18% was, uh, was directed to households. So uh, now the situation which we uh, have in Poland, that the coal prices for households increased by 300%, and still there is no coal for households. You cannot buy it. Uh, so the situation is that once you heated your home a uh, year ago uh, at, at the cost of around 1,000 euro, you you have to be prepared uh, that uh, this winter you would need 4,000 euro for heating your house. And uh, of course, uh, mainly poorer households uh, are heated with coal. So we expect that there will be hot discussion around uh, coal uh, in winter and also um, thermal renovation and uh, heat pumps, uh, which are only the solution uh, in in this context. Just, just finally, John. I mean, I'd like to look at you know. I know we've seen a, a, a massive boom in in solar uh, installations and solar capacity in Poland. Now, in the light of the energy crisis, the the reduction in in Russian gas supply, does does this mean an acceleration of the energy transition in Poland, despite some calls to return to coal? I think there is still a dispute in the government what the strategy should be. Uh, so there are different fractions within, the, within government, and the major challenge is still that this um, distance regulation for onshore uh, wind has not been relaxed uh, or has not been revised, despite many um, announcements that it will uh, happen already last year, then at the beginning of this year, and still uh, some uh, there is some blocking minority in the party who does not want to allow this. Uh, so I think it's, um, in, from my perspective, uh, you know, dealing with energy policy uh, since 15 years, uh, I don't see any other, uh, really any other choice. Of course, the challenge lies on the grid side because uh, distribution grids uh, need to be enhanced and uh, there are certainly uh, real issues with uh, with, uh, new um, uh, new, um, decisions for uh, connecting renewables into the grid. Uh, so this is something what, uh, but of course there are also solutions like cable pooling, uh, 
But also the uh, industry is making huge pressure on the government because renewables uh, and long-term contracts, PPAs, would now lower their cost. But nevertheless, this is not happening. But in fact, I can expect that uh, the only way to go for Poland is really to invest uh, and allow uh, for renewables development. Because in the first uh, step, it would lower also gas demand. Uh, regarding coal, this this is a good question, what can happen in Poland? So uh, you still need to remember that all the g- generation units are really old and uh, underinvested uh, because of many reasons. Uh, we don't have to time, uh, we don't have time to speak about this. And this will not change. And also the uh, the amount of Polish coal, I mean, for years, pro- uh, coal production is fo- falling down. Uh, and it would be difficult really to change that trend because of uh, many uh, economic reasons and also geological reasons. So there is no coal, uh, which is, uh, I mean, there is still, uh, Poland still has coal reservoirs, but not uh, uh, which should be access at the, you know, reasonable economic uh, uh, level. But I can expect that for uh, three years uh, there will be more enthusiasm toward coal and then probably we will pay also much uh, higher prices for coal. But then I don't expect it will impact the uh, final uh, coal end date in Poland, which is, in our view, 2035. And then, of course, is the uh, answer uh, what could uh, be really this uh, solution, the carbon, what can fill that gap after coal. In this context, uh, nuclear uh, is a very vivid project, uh, but still, uh, in the next ten years, it's not the solution for the crisis which we see. So, in this context, uh, having in mind that we build uh, renewable uh, projects within a few years, basically both uh, in uh, solar energy and onshore wind, um, only reviewing permitting and solving grid problems and then uh, renewables deployment and further integration and market changes uh, in order to make it more flexible is the solution uh, which uh, uh, would be really uh, realistic and uh, accessible uh, help for Poland. Jana, thank you very much for joining the Montel Weekly Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. A fantastic overview. Thank you. Thank you. So listeners, you can now follow the podcast on our own Twitter account, aptly named the Montel Weekly Podcast. Please direct message, any suggestions, questions, or, you know, let us know if you if you think you have a good idea for a guest on the show. You can also send us an email to podcast at montelnews.com. Lastly, remember to keep up to date with all that's happening in energy markets on Montel News. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. Thank you and goodbye.